Hey guys, how's it going? It's Dale from the King Realty Group. Hope you're having a great day. Uh, thanks again for joining us. Uh, we're in June and we're reviewing May 2020. Uh, the theme of this video obviously is to review our uh, monthly stats uh, when it comes to the real estate market here in the GTA. We want to figure out what's going on. Now that the province is opening up a bit and people are getting back to work and things are opening up, uh, how does that affect our real estate market? Has it been positive? Has it been negative? Uh, what's going on with our average price point? Has, is it on the up and up or is it on the down? Uh, these are the questions a lot of people are asking us and we're going to answer in this video here. All right, guys, thanks for joining us again. Uh, what we're going to do uh, in this video is review uh, May 2020 uh, GTA uh, TREB stats numbers. Uh, this really gives us an idea of what's going on in our marketplace when it comes to the real estate. How are our sales doing? Are people buying homes? Are people selling homes? And what's going on uh, now that we've uh, been impacted by uh, COVID-19 virus? And uh, we're actually uh, seemingly opening up here in, in the province, which is great. But how has that affected our real estate market? And this is what we're going to talk about now. So how we do in every video is we're going to take a look at the average price points, um, starting off by the GTA average price price point which we're going to put up on the screen now uh, so we have it at 838,248 that's actually up three percent uh, from May 2019 we're actually our price point is higher than last year believe it or not despite all the things that have been happening in the last couple months let's take a look at the other uh, types of homes though detach is at 942 uh, 668,000 and that's actually at 1.8 percent which is great all our numbers are positive by the way guys just a uh, spoiler alert <laughs> semi-detached homes are at 716,549 that's actually up uh, 5.6 percent that's the uh, biggest increase out of all the housing types uh, townhouses are close behind though they're at 659,704 and we see that at 4.9 um, condo apartments are actually a little bit softer you know if you are selling a condo if you're going to buy a condo this could be a good opportunity as a buyer um, a little tougher as a seller because there's a bit of competition with condos right now uh, despite the fact that we did go up in price at the average price point from um, May last year to this year at uh, 497,010 and that's actually up 3.9 percent so overall guys uh, a three percent increase in price from last year to this year is very surprising to many uh, because uh, obviously we're going through this virus situation and many people are staying home and many people have different this virus is affecting people differently some people are a little bit more paranoid about the whole thing and a lot of people are a little bit more lax about it and again we can't take people's opinions and preferences away so everyone's going to feel their own thing What's surprising though uh, to many is the fact that we went up in price. A lot of people are thinking that our price point is going down, but I've said over the last few months, I've been watching my videos that our prices are actually holding this whole entire time. I haven't really seen an excess dip in price points based on the numbers that we see. Um, and even in my own experiences with our sellers, uh, we've had listings over the last couple months, we've had buyers over the last couple months. And uh, you know what, we're paying and we're selling around the price that we would have been paying and selling for, you know, I guess, it's possible we could have been paying more and selling for more because the months of May, uh, sorry, January and February were actually very hot. But regardless, we're still at those levels, even uh, now in June. So let's take a look at sales, guys, and we'll talk a little bit more about that other stuff after. Uh, we're at 4,606. Uh, that's still 53.9% less than uh, last year in May. Uh, this is the spring market, guys. We normally are averaging around 8,000 sales a month believe it or not, and that's buy and sell. So both sides, uh, we're at 4,000. Last year, last month, we were at 2,000. We're under 3,000. So we've actually increased our sales about 50% uh, from um, April to May. However, still from May 2019 to May 2020, we're down 50%. So, you know, obviously huge changes from March, April into May, uh, just comparing month to month, but we're still much on the lower, uh, we're still very low on the sales compared to last year, but that doesn't necessarily reflect price. We saw price earlier went up by 3%. Our sales went down though, right? Mm -hmm. So they don't really correlate 100%. However, it is just something that we look at. Moving forward though, let's take a look at months of inventory, uh, sales to active listing ratio. Those are the two indicators that we we look to to gauge whether we're in, in a balanced market, a seller market, or a, a buyer market, right? And when I say buyer market, it's better for a buyer. When it's a seller market, it's better for a seller. Balanced, there's a bit of negotiation. There's a bit of give and take on both sides. So Toronto, we're at 2.69 months of inventory, 37 sales to active listing ratio. Technically, seller based on this number, but again, not everything sells, guys. In, in an average year, in a full year, Roughly 50% of properties sell, 50% of properties don't sell when they get listed on the MLS. So it's a misconception to think that everything sells. However, uh, technically speaking, we're in a seller market in Toronto. In Durham, we're at 1.49 months of inventory, 67 sale, uh, sales to active listing ratio. Very hot in Durham. We've had a listing in Durham last couple of weeks. We got 11 offers on it, uh, if you can imagine. So multiple offers are happening. Durham is one of the lower price point. Uh, it has a lower price point than other regions of the GTA. It is the cheapest, you know, compared to York region, Toronto, and we go into Peel, Halton region, for example. Durham is cheaper. And if you go into markets like Whitby and Oshawa, you're paying 500,000 for a detached house, 
where you're paying double when you're in Toronto, for example, at 900. And so uh, those properties are flying off the shelves and with multiple offers at the moment. And maybe this is the reason why Durham is it's seeing a month of inventory at 1.49. PL 2.14, not too far off. 47% sales stock and listing ratio. Technically in the seller market based on what we're seeing in these numbers, however, it could reflect differently in your micro market in your neighborhood where you live. In uh, York region, we're at 3.6 months of inventory. So balanced more so balanced there at 28% sales to active listing ratio. And overall across the GTA, our months of inventory is 2.48. So things are moving into a heated kind of environment. Things are selling as uh, things are selling for multiple offers. However, some properties may be sitting on the market and it could be price related. So if you have a listing that's luxury, that's over 1.5, 1.2, it could sit on the market a little bit longer than something that's worth 500,000, right? That's maybe an entry level uh, family detached house or semi-detached those are very in demand at the moment, very in demand. So if you have one of those, if you're moving up, actually, it could be a good opportunity for you to sell and capitalize on our on our demand for entry level price point homes. And then now you're moving up into a, into a more expensive market uh, where you could actually have a little bit of breathing room and you can negotiate with the seller. Uh, so keep that in mind. If you want to talk about that, if you have that interest, reach out and we'll, we can chat about that. Key highlights of the month, guys. So that's something that we look at all the time. So one of the things that we wanted to focus on is the fact that uh, new listings are starting to pick up uh, across the GTA. However, the absorption of these new listings are on the, is on the softer side. Uh, what we need is more buyers in the marketplace to remain at balance. We don't want more inventory in terms of supply and then have nobody buy them when it comes to demand. That pushes prices down. You know, that would, that would actually start decreasing our price point because we have a lot of inventory and nobody's actually buying that stuff. So for now, we had a spike in new listings and it's been a softer absorption, but we'll see how it goes in the next few months. Uh, we would need more buyers to come off the sidelines, guys, to, uh, to have this balanced trend or it could put the downward uh, pressure on the values. So markets are super hot though. Multiple offers are becoming the norm and uh, we're seeing this uh, more apparent in the entry level price point under that $800,000, $700,000 price. They're a little bit more uh, in demand. Uh, let, let's put it that way. You know, maybe it is uh, people who have more discretionary funds, things that they have the ability to be able to buy more expensive home. They might be more on the sidelines. They don't want to spend, you know, millions of bucks on a, on a property if they don't have to. Uh, uh, just to give you an idea. OK, so market has improved greatly from the April low because we that was at this point the lowest point in terms of our numbers. So sales have increased 55 percent month to month from April to May. So that's a huge increase. However, we're still down. 54% from uh, May 2019. So uh, we, we mentioned that earlier. Data suggests though that we have mo moved past this April lull, this lull that we had in our marketplace. We've kind of moved past that because week over week, month over month, we've having increases in activity and, uh, and sales as well. So we'll see how that goes over the next few months. Hopefully we don't um, revert like some of these other states and countries around the world um, that have opened up and they've had spike increases in cases and then they've had to kind of reshut down. That would be really, really tough on morale. I don't know how that would do for a real estate market. Let's just hope that uh, Ontarians are, are keeping safe and following guidelines so that we don't let this thing get out of control uh, again. OK, so supply increased slightly more than demand. So it actually moved this into a more balanced market versus a seller market over this last uh, month. And over what we witnessed this in April, which was uh, which was good. I, I'd rather be in a balanced market than really in any direction. I, it's tough for us when we have very extreme seller market. It's tough for us when we have a very extreme buyer's market. It's never. It's, it's always much better when we're balanced. I think for everybody. So homes took a little bit longer to sell, uh, 24 days versus 19 days of last year, uh, which makes sense. Uh, and prices, the decline observed in, in April, we've recovered. We've actually increased in price 5.1% from April to May, month to month. And that's actually up because from March to April, we actually went down in price, average price, 8.9%. Now that number though is a little bit weird because it's uh, the luxury home sales were definitely on the low end. There weren't many of those. And so that kind of skewed our average price. Um, last thing guys is that we're still up. We're at 3% now from May 2019. Uh, it's a big improvement from the flat growth of April. April, we're actually at 0%, 0.2% to be exact over 2019. So we never went negative, you know, over those last couple of months, which is very, you know, it just shows how resilient GTA market is. Uh, you know, a lot of people came to me and asked me, Daniel, you know, I'm just going to wait because prices are going to drop, right? And I said, well, I don't know if they're going to drop or not. I don't have a crystal ball. Even in stocks, just like stocks, we're a market, we have cycles, right? And to, and to find that drop, to find that like, bottom 
is almost impossible, guys. Even stockbrokers that do this all day long can say it's impossible to find the bottom even in the stock market. Same thing with the GTA market. It's very tough to find that bottom, wherever that is. Apparently, it was in April, and that's a couple months ago, right? So what I say to people is, what is your plan? What is your goal? Are you trying to live in this property or are you trying to flip it in short term? Most people want to live in a home and be there for a few years. If that's the case in the GTA, you will not, do, you will not lose, you will do very well. And um, what's happened in the last couple of months and the numbers that I'm showing you today are very indicative of how strong the market is. So guys, this is what I have for you today. Um, hopefully this helped. If you have any questions, definitely let us know. Um, if you want more information about what's going on in your particular neighborhood, it's very different than what's going on in a macro level, which is what I'm showing you right now. So get in touch with us and we'll, uh, we'll definitely help you out, guys. You have a great day and uh, you know subscribe, uh, get the notification on. Uh, we do these every month. And so if you likely you want more of it, and we're gonna do other things too. We're doing our expert talks. We had a talk with Max, our mortgage broker, which is gonna come up in the next couple of days. And uh, we send stuff to people all the time. If you wanna be on the mailing list, uh, get in touch, guys. Take care and uh, be safe. Talk soon.